what AI can be doing in 10 years, 20 years time is pretty interesting. What AI is doing now is it's actually reasonably boring to be honest, but the things that it is doing is actually quite powerful. It's things like recommendation engines, which what is somebody probably going to buy next? You know, what should you recommend to them? It's incredibly powerful. One really interesting application of, of AI, of course, is, is what Phrase does, where making sure that the language you're using in your online marketing campaigns uh, is more impactful than what they would be if humans were left to do it on their own. Everything started, I believe, with Google and the likes at the beginning of the 2000s. And uh, what has changed? Like, what have been the major changes that you think really have constituted a switch in how things are done in the digital marketing field? Yeah, so when I when I first entered the, the marketing world, I mean, marketing was all about creativity. It was all about experimentation. It was all about, you know, taking chances, getting to know your customer and really speaking to them. Fast forward 20 years and marketing now is about who can manage the most effective spreadsheet. And, and marketing has become an administrative task instead of a creative task. Because, you know, a marketer's daily job, you, you, you come into work, well, or you stay at home these days and you have 20 different browser windows open. Uh, you have your email software here. You have your AdWords account, your Facebook account. You, you, you just have to manage all of these, these different software portals. And one of the challenges with that is people have become so focused on the operational efficiency of marketing, they've forgotten that the creative aspects of marketing have a huge, huge impact, more of an impact than any operational efficiency. Uh, and, and this is where um, Frazy is bringing people back. We're actually creating software that allows people to become more creative. Can you kind of share your view why email marketing is still relevant today and when it's relevant basically? Here's the thing about email. It's the only true first party data that you have to market to people online. So you have the, the likes of advertising on Google, advertising on Facebook, um, display advertising, things like that. They all get channeled through a third party and the third party tends to be monopolistic actors in the marketplace. Whereas when you have an email address, it basically operates in um, a completely fragmented marketplace, which is you know regulated by some, some shared global standards and that's it. So once you have that first party data, you can market to it as you wish. You can do what you want with it. You are not beholden to the, to the walled gardens of third party actors. That's why email is still around. And that's why email is still the unheralded workhorse of every single marketing function on the planet. Where is the challenge slash the problem today with email marketing? One of the challenges is that the companies who sell like, like email distribution stuff, so they call them ESPs, right? Those companies for the last 15 years have been embroiled in a race to the bottom where it's become a very price sensitive marketplace. And the way that they've won new business is by undercutting competition. What this has done over 15 years is created a perception in the marketplace that email marketing is cheap. And by virtue of it being cheap, people then don't value it and they don't invest in that channel. Now, this is starting to change because people have realized that actually email is a reliable revenue source for brand marketers. I like to understand how in general AI can help to make the marketing through emails more effective. Every time an email gets sent, it winds up in people's inboxes. And whether they open it or not, that message is still in front of, in front of eyeballs. So where you can use AI very effectively is to increase the probability of eyeballs seeing it, then clicking on it, opening it, and then taking action off the back of it. And, and that's where AI, like Frazy, comes in, where we can increase the probability of consumers opening and acting upon the emails which the brands send out. So how is Frazy doing this, actually? Yeah, so, so what Frazy effectively does, we've got two different types of AI built into our system. Number one is natural language generation. So that's, you know, it's a system that generates natural sounding language. This is language that's tailored to a brand's voice, tailored to a brand's compliance guidelines, all this kind of stuff. The second layer is a deep learning engine, which can predict the probability of consumers opening it at scale. So when you combine these two things, something that can generate lots of language and then something that can predict if that language is going to work or not, you get a very powerful tool 
that can create language to use in your subject lines, in your email body, across all your different advertising channels to create language that's going to generate a response from consumers at a significantly higher rate than when left to human devices on their own. When you say significantly higher rate, what is that? Nobody ever gets 100% open rate. You're saying your range is between 10 and 20. Let's say the theoretical limit is 25. What Phrasey does is it pushes you closer to the theoretic limit than you can get on your own. If your business is fundamentally broken and nobody wants to buy your products, the best subject line in the world can't make them buy a product. But what Phrasey can do is it can entice consumers to get you back to your theoretic maximum, um, which is where we should all be operating. Is this a technology that adapts to the particular customer? or as a general way of doing things across customers? What we do is we create language models on a brand-to-brand -brand basis. And by virtue of doing that, it allows linguistic specialization and then wall learning on a brand-to-brand -brand basis. So that when a brand starts using us and they use us more and more and more, the model learns and their results get continuously and progressively better. Better language gets you better results online. Language is a currency of the internet. You know, you go on Amazon, you read descriptions, you go to their checkout page, it's got language on it. You see a picture of the, of the product and that's all well and good, uh, but then you read reviews, you go to the checkout page and follow instructions. They say that COVID drives the final purchase. Is it still true or what is your view on that? Agree with that to the point where copy is the sort of moment of truth stuff but what it does is it it amplifies imagery and, and vice versa. Imagery can amplify copy, but they don't operate in silos and it shouldn't be a thing going like, should I care about images or should I care about language? That's the wrong question. The right question is, what's the right language to use with this imagery or what's the right imagery to use with this language? And that's how people should be thinking about it. Was there something like, you know, that you find out when, when you went and developed the product that, that you didn't expect? What, what we've learned throughout the years is every time we sign a, a new customer, their experience, their wants, their needs are gonna be slightly different from everybody else's. And so our product tweaks a bit and we bring on a new customer and our product tweaks a bit and we're constantly, constantly updating our product to be at the cutting edge of what customers want. What is that you have learned in doing, bringing to market something so advanced and what it is that you recommend others to do if they had to do something like this? A couple of things that we've done right is we've never done anything for free. We don't do free trials. We never will do free trials. As soon as you do something for free, nobody values it. Um, so, they, so, so they don't really try as hard to make it work and whatnot. And then secondly, once you find a customer who just gets it, you, you hold on, you do everything you can to help that customer succeed because they're, they're gonna be your biggest advocates. They're, they're gonna be you know talking about you, shouting about you.